Did my changes solve all of my problems or did I just create a huge money bag of more problems? Let's find out. What's the scariest, most difficult part of making corsets? 65% of you think it's fitting them and I completely agree. Fitting a corset is a daunting, overwhelming task. But I have a tried and true four stage method that makes it much easier to tackle. And if you stick with me till the end of the video, I'll have three more quick tips to help you level up your corset fitting game. First thing I'm gonna give a quick fitting note regarding the particular, the particular pattern I'm using to make my corset, which is the Laughing Moon number 100, specifically the door corset. It has some very particular fitting quirks. If you're not interested in making either the door or the Silverado and just want some general fitting information, you can skip till the next chapter, which is the first corset fitting stage. First, it runs large. If you need to cut a size 14 or above, you need to go down one size immediately. If you're on the higher side of the size run, it might be a full two sizes down. Pay special attention to the first fitting stage so you know before you spend all that time cutting out the fabric. Secondly, the measurements on the back are specifically if you're cutting a B cup. If you're an A cup, the bust measurement will be a full two inches less. If you're cutting a C cup, it's going to be two inches more. And if you're cutting a D cup, it'll be a full four inches more. It was suggested to me that if my waist measurement was a larger size than my bust measurement, to size down my cup size until my bust measurement and my waist measurement were equal to the same size. That was the case for me. And that meant this F cup was supposed to cut a B cup. Okay. Out of curiosity, I placed all of my pattern pieces together, matching all of the registration marks and the waistline and looked at it and I was like, this thing is huge. And then I realized, oh, there's seam allowance on this, duh. With something as precise as a corset, I prefer to work with no seam allowance on my pattern. That way I can accurately draw the lines of the corset onto the fabric and I don't have to worry about me making a mistake with the seam allowance, which could lead to an incorrect fit. This is a pain in the butt. I am going to remove the seam allowance from all of my pattern pieces. When you do this, make sure that you transfer all of the markings to the actual lines so that you can match everything up correctly. Once the seam allowance was removed, I measured everything back out and I was about an inch short in the waist and about four inches short in the bust on the one side. So logically, I decided to cut out the D cup instead of the B cup. Once I'd done that, I placed it with the rest of the pieces and measured it out. And it's almost exactly where I needed to be. Just goes to show you should trust your instincts. Okay, that's about all we can do on paper. Now we're gonna cut it out and fit it properly. But how do you even know what's a properly fitting corset and what isn't? And how the heck do you know how to fix it? You want a smooth, close fitting exterior with no wrinkles. Wrinkling indicates there's something wrong. If the wrinkles are at the waist, that's a torso length issue and it either needs to be shortened or lengthened depending on whether you're short-waisted or long-waisted. Anywhere else, it's either too tight and the fabric is straining or it's too loose and there's just excess fabric you'll know which one. You want a straight, even gap in the back. The gap is there to accommodate for your weight fluctuation. You can always make your corset larger, but you can't make it smaller. So if it meets in the back, that's as small as it's gonna get. You also don't want it small in one place and then really large in another. Make the gap two inches at the waist first, then take in or let out until it's even all the way down. You want it to be comfortable. Discomfort is the first indication that there's something wrong with your fit. Say it with me now. If you can't breathe, your corset is too tight. No matter what others say to the contrary, we're historical costumers and we know better. If you, like me, know better, leave me a comment below saying aye aye cap'n and you'll get a special response. You want a natural bust line. So no super high cleavage or droopy dubbies. 
and the top of your corset should reach your bust point. The waist hits smallest at your natural waist point and then flares out over the hips to give you that classic hourglass shape. And don't worry if your proportions don't match that of the pattern. Fit to your real waist measurement and then you can pad out the bust and the hips to get the shape that you desire. Now let's pin this thing together and see how it does. I like to mark the top of each piece because with shapes like this, it can get kind of confusing which end is up. It's really important when you do this to make sure you're pinning through the lines. Don't just match the edges. Done! Even on a mock-up, it's important to iron your seams. I'm using a permanent marker to mark my seam lines and notches since originally I used friction pen to make my marks and they'll disappear with the iron. Then iron those babies out. Somebody suggested using masking tape to tape your boning to the corset instead of sewing boning channels on your mock-up. So I thought I'd try it. I will say that this is probably a better method if you're using wider masking tape than I am here. It's also not very sticky. First try on is finished. Unfortunately, my suspicions were correct and the masking tape did not hold the boning at all. Half of them fell out as I was trying to put it on. One of the ones that fell off was the right bust seam, which means I look like Michelle Pfeiffer in Stardust in that scene in the carriage where she uses magic to talk to her sisters and it ages her hand. So she zaps her hands and it manifests into one of something else on her body. Despite the lopsidedness, I will say I only had about like a one and three quarters of an inch gap down the back and I'm looking for a full three inches. It was straight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take it in by about an inch and a half. So we'll spread that distance out through the back of the corset since I know my body tends to be smaller in the back than the front. Secondly, again, as I suspected, I do not have enough room in the bust. I was getting lift instead of a comfortable fit. So we're going to go ahead and add a full inch to just the bust portion of the corset. The final thing is, is that it was starting to wrinkle upwards at the hips. I decided to hold off on modifying the hip because with corsetry, every tiny little change affects everything else. So I want to see what this looks like on my body before I make any decisions about the hips. This masking tape I used was thin and old. I went ahead and picked some up at the grocery store. So I went ahead and used this masking tape on all of the boning that is on the seams of the corset. We're gonna go try it on and I will show you this time as long as the boning stays where it needs to and we'll make some modifications from there. Here's a practical real life demonstration why it's physically impossible to tight lace in anything with handwork eyelets, which counts for every single corset and pair of stays made before the debut of metal grommets in the late 1820s. Look at these eyelets. Do you see, especially in where the waist and the hips are, how much it's torn? I was only wearing this thing for about 10 minutes because the boning was poking me under the arms. Imagine trying to wear this all day. It would completely rip through your holes. This is why the invention of metal grommets was so important to shaping literally the fashionable silhouette because we couldn't do it before. With the grommeted lacing strips made, I could finally try the thing on. So here are the issues I'm having now. Here's the back of the corset. See how the top is completely touching? This is because I added a full two inches of room in the bust. Not only that, but I'm getting some terrible gaping happening in the back boning. Here's the wrinkling at the hips. This is because the fabric is straining since my hips are larger than the flare currently allows. Also, there's this weird drop at the waist and I'm pretty sure that has to do with the waist being too long for my body. I also felt like the bust was too low. I kept trying to tug it up, so I'm moving the start of the curve up by an inch. Next, we need to accommodate for the added space in the bust. I'm going to spread the back measurement out between the center back and side back seams. The center back seam, I'm going to take in by an inch on each side. So I drew a line half an inch away from the current seam. Note here that I'm only taking it in to right above the waist. I'll grade the seam back out since I don't need to take it in at the waist or hips. I'll then do the same to the side back seam, only draw a line an eighth of an inch from the seam, which should give me the full three inch gap that I want in the back. Then it was time to lace that baby back up and put her on. Okay, here's where we're at. It's better. 
I'm still getting the wrinkling at the hips, but that's to be expected. The gap in the back is much better, but still not perfect. Okay, what we're going to do now is simultaneously let out the hips and bring the waist up about a half of an inch. So this is how we're going to do this at the same time. So when I was wearing this, I realized that there was really no hip spring happening and there should be because if you look at the pieces, it's pretty intense. So what I have done is very painstakingly gone through and measured where the hip was supposed to be. So here's a good example. So I drew the seam line in green and hopefully you can see that here. Okay, and then I redrew it with the actual line that it was supposed to be. And then I moved it up a half of an inch and redrew in purple. I've done this on every seam except for this last one. So I've already drawn my green line here. So I'm gonna match up my notches and then find my hip. I've gone up half of an inch. So I'm gonna move this up, make sure that this line is still aligned. I'm gonna use my purple pen to draw in that line. Let's see, it meets back up on this seam right here. There is definitely a different curve to it. That one's done and I'm just gonna double check. That one's good, this one's good. So, and this is a total pain in the ass, but it's better than having to completely recut all of this. So we're gonna go onto the machine, we're gonna re-sew all these seams and then re-tape all of the boning, which is not good watching. So I will check back with you after I'm done. Boom! What a difference that made. Now I am getting a little bit of weirdness happening in the back here. It's again, a little bit too close together here. And I have a tiny little gap here. And as you can see, I lost a grommet. I've been wearing this for about an hour. I had lunch, a very large plate of spaghetti. I feel as uncomfortable as you would expect after eating a large plate of spaghetti, but I don't feel any more uncomfortable than I would have if I had just been wearing normal clothes, which tells me I'm in a pretty good spot here. So the next stage of this is to purchase all of the steel boning and busk that I need to do the final corset. You don't wanna do this until you have gotten your corset to a point where it is pretty close to what you need and you're only gonna to have to make some small tweaks. So one last thing before I transfer all of my markings to a new second mock-up is we are going to go ahead and release the Kraken. We're gonna cut up into this, release the hips, get it to a comfortable spot. So I ripped open one seam and measured the distance of the triangle on one side and then the other. They're slightly different, so I'll add the two together and have it. To fix the hole of the lacing strip, first I zigzagged over all of the torn edges. Then I took two pieces of medium weight muslin, fused interfacing onto each of them. Then I took another single piece of medium weight muslin, stuck it on one side, sewed those babies onto the lacing strip, and it was safe for me to add another grommet. So what I've been doing for the past two hours is retracing all of my pattern pieces onto fresh sheets of paper. This is excruciating. I hate it, but it's necessary. So then I raised the hip on all of the pieces by half an inch like I needed to. And now what I'm doing is I'm going back and I'm slashing and spreading to take in all of the space that I took in on the back. The reason I'm doing this and I'm not just drawing diagonal lines is because I'm concerned about grain issues. I'm slashing and spreading so I can take it in evenly. But the problem is now the waist is going to be three inches smaller than it should be on each side because I had to take it in evenly throughout. That's the case for the hips too. So now what I'm having to do is go back and add that inch back into the hips and the waist and then grading it up so that it is still smaller at the top and wider at the bottom to accommodate my shape. If this weird flickering light is bothering you, guess what, it's bothering me too. Thank you to everyone who has donated so far on my Kofi account. I cannot express how much I appreciate you. There's a link in the description below. I'm currently trying to save for a real video camera. Right now I'm filming on an old phone that is very broken and apparently now possessed by gremlins. I'm almost there, I just have a little bit more to raise. So if you have the means, I would really appreciate you helping me out. 
If not, that's totally fine. Just by watching this video, you are helping me out in so many ways. Modifying the front panels were much simpler. On piece number nine, which is the side bust for me, I first went ahead and added about a half an inch to the hip spring and graded it down to the waist to accommodate for the wider hip spread that I need. Instead of adjusting by measuring for the bust, I went ahead and cut pieces eight and nine on the exact seam that I had sewn. And then it was just as easy as lining up the lines on the bottom portion of the corset and then tracing out the curve of the bust. For piece number eight, I just updated the bust and I didn't worry about adding any hip spring since I was already getting a little bit of extra space in that section. Okay, let's cut these out and then cut out our second mock-up. You need to spend more time putting together the second mock-up than you did with the first. Get it as close as you can to the real structure so that you save yourself some time down the road and you don't waste your real materials, which are gonna cost a lot more, right? All right, so let's take a look at this second mock-up. So what you can see here, this is the center front. I have laid in my busk. Now I've only masking taped it in <laughs> because I didn't feel like faffing about with my zipper foot for this, but I did take the time to, you know, sew and get the busk little hookies guys out. For all of the standard pieces, I've flatlined, made all my markings, sewed in my permanent boning channels here. I'm still going to lay in the seam boning with masking tape because I do expect I'm gonna have to make some adjustments with this. Fingers crossed not too many adjustments but there will have to be some. And then finally on the back I went ahead and I put in my two steel bones on each center back side as well as my boning strip. <laughs> These are not even, oh well, the plastic boning, the zip ties just isn't strong enough for the pressure of the corset. Whereas, you know, it, it's fine for a pair of stays, but for a corset, I really need that steel in there. The only other change is I'm gonna take my spiral steel and I'm gonna put it on the bust seam here because again, that's gonna change the support. This is it folks. This is the moment of truth. Did my changes solve all of my problems or did I just create a huge money bag of more problems? Let's find out. 20 minutes, half a beer, and a snack later. Well, I've got good news and bad news. The good news is it fits pretty well. Uh, I don't have a ton of wrinkling. I've got a little weird wrinkling here where wrinkling shouldn't happen, but I think that has to do with the masking tape and not necessarily the construction of the corset. However, I've got like a five inch lacing gap now in the back. It's fairly even. I am getting a little bit of gaping on one back side, but not the other. And I don't know if that's just how that side is constructed or a particular quirk of my body. I have to figure that out. Interestingly enough, even though the corset is now technically a smaller size than it was, I am lacing down a full inch less than I was before. So that tells me that it's too small. I'm gonna let it out evenly. I may have to do some hip adjustments later, but I'm that's the last thing we're gonna do because we're gonna end up stuffing those anyway to get my full hip measurement. I took it in by three quarters of an inch on each side, spreading that out between the center back and side back panels. It's much better at the top, although the hip width is now huge. Here's what it looks like with the hips pulled completely together. I'm still getting some bowing in the back, but I'm almost positive that it has to do with my shoddily made lacing strips. The grommets are uneven, I'm using zip ties instead of steel, and the grommets are too large and too wide apart. With that in mind, I'm going to remake my lacing strips using proper materials like cotille, smaller grommets, and actual steel. Hey, I'm a poet! and I didn't even know it. I have to wait a couple of days for those supplies to come in and this video is due out in a couple of days and already way longer than I planned. So I'm going to stop here and the final small adjustments will be in the final villainous corset video along with stage four, which is the final adjustments that you have to do in your actual corset when it's almost finished. So if you're interested in seeing that, don't forget to subscribe and you can hit the little bell to be notified when that one goes live. Expect it about four weeks from when this particular video goes live, since it takes a long time to make a corset. And as promised for making it to this late in the video, here are three more quick tips 
for leveling up your corset game. One, video is your friend. It is an objective eye. Film yourself with your mock-up on, paying special attention to your back, since that's really hard to see when you've got it on. I cannot tell you how much easier it is to see problems when you're looking at a video instead of trying to do it, you know, in the mirror, looking back and walking yourself in circles. Two, wear the heck out of your mock-up. Put it through its paces. Do housework, bend, sit for long periods of time. It's going to change and mold your body. What feels uncomfortable at first might go away, and what feels great at first might start to feel uncomfortable. Only time will tell. Three, and the most important one, make some shitty corsets, y'all. That's right, my friends. Your first corset isn't going to fit well. Your second corset probably isn't gonna fit well. That's okay, it's expected, it's a good thing. Because messing up is how you truly start to figure out what your particular body quirks are. Each one is going to be a huge learning experience. And so allowing yourself to fail, not spending a lot of money on your first couple, and being okay with messing up is the best way to really get good at fitting corsets. It kind of sucks that you have to do it a couple of times, but it is a skill that is something that has to be learned and each individual body is different. So you can watch as many videos as you want, but until you actually do it a few times, it's not gonna click. I think it took me four corsets before I really got it. And that's okay, that's expected. Thank y'all so much for watching. I hope that this video helps you get that perfect fit. If you have any questions, you can always drop down into the comments below and leave them there. Thanks so much for watching y'all. This was fun and I'll catch you in my next video. And if you enjoyed this video and want more corset content, you can check out this video on the screen here.